And good morning, gang. It's Saturday, the 2nd of May, 2015. Welcome to this morning's United Kingdom talk. Today is a very special day, boys and girls. Oh, yes, a new royal baby has been born out of its mother. Well, it wasn't created in a test tube, was it? Let's be honest. It was born out of its mother. Congratulations to the Duchess of Cambridge, Princess Kate, oh, congratulations and celebrations when I tell everyone that you're in love with me. Although not me, you're probably in love more with William than me. But congratulations to little Kate, yes, the baby who is fourth in line to the throne, which I know is surprising to you, boys and girls. It's even, even closer to the throne than I am. Well, not quite, because my one's just <laughs> my one's just along the along the uh, along the hallway there. Yes, he is fourth in line to the throne, and he was born this morning at 08:34 G at B is it a BST BST British Summer Time. The palace said in a statement, the Duke of Cambridge, uh, which is uh, Prince William, was present for the birth of the baby. Uh, weighs eight pounds and three ounces. I've got this from the BBC uh, website. Okay, both Catherine and her daughter are doing well. The statement added, the Duchess has earlier been admitted to the Lindo Wing at St Mary's Hospital, where Prince George was born uh, in July 2013. So congratulations to Princess Kate for the birth of a Another baby. So what is this? The, the Lindo Wing at St. Mary's Hospital. Is that an NHS hospital? Do you think she pays extra for that? <laughs> I'm not quite sure if she does or not. Yeah, so we're, there we are. Please, please the happy uh, uh, announcer for baby. And talking to babies, uh, my, my nephew's wife, uh, Stacy, is due a baby. She is now overdue. We are waiting. That might come today as well. I wonder if if she, if she'd call it because it's a little girl. I th I can't remember if my if my nephew's wife is having a little girl or a little boy. Actually, I wonder if they name it name it the same one. What's the oh by the way, someone told me the name. Where is it? Elizabeth Diana Alice. Oh, not Alice. Not a they haven't called it Alice, have they? Oh my God, who is Alice? Who the is Alice? <laughs> Do you know that song? No, I'm not going to sing it. I'm absolutely not going to sing it. Thank you very much. No. You know the one by Smokey. Who the mm, is Alice? Um, no, I'm not saying that word. This is a good, clean programme. Thank you very much. So congratulations to her. Uh, yes, good morning to you. Uh, we are also do today uh, on Periscope, boys and girls. I keep telling you about this app. Download it. It's the best app ever invented. Um, £6,000 a night, that room is apparently, according to uh, someone on, on Periscope. £6,000. Well, I hope she's not there too long then. You know when they do those hospital and hotel rooms, you know, like thousands of pounds a night? If you only stay for a few hours, is it less? Is it less? <laughs> what do you reckon? You know, does someone sit there with a cal... Where's my calculator gone? A calculator... I bet you haven't seen one of these before, have you? This is really old. This calculator is 30 years old. It's a, um, a Casio FX39. <laughs> Do they sit there with like, you know, £6,000 divided by 24 uh, is so much an hour and you stayed there two hours, you know? Eh? I bet they don't, do they? You've got to, you've got to upgrade it to your, to your longest hour or anything like that. Uh, good morning to Terry Hates, who's just joining us this morning. Good morning, Terry, who says it's a girl. They'll be saying she will be out today. Well, uh, well I hope so as well. £6,000 a night in an hospital, dear. I should hope so as well. I bet the Queen's on the phone now. Come on, come on, Kate, girl. Don't waste any more money in there. Get out there as soon as possible, dear. £6,000 a night. Do me a favour. Um, Alice or Charlotte? Well, uh, Guy, who's with us today, uh, good morning, Guy, says it's Elizabeth Diana Alice. Oh, it's, oh sorry, it may be the new name for the royal baby. Oh, I see. So I, th I thought you meant Elizabeth Diana and Alice. Now, what one should we go? Well, should we place bets? Place your bets, press your buttons now. Eh? What do you reckon? I wonder what it'll be. I reckon... <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think Alice. Now, Elizabeth or Diana? <sighs> I 
I ain't going to put my money on Elizabeth. Not that I'm putting any money on. We don't do betting, dear. The only bet I've ever done was last year on the Eurovision Song Contest. And I won £450. Bing! Money in the tail. Thank you very much. That's not bad, is it? £450. So, yes, that was, and that was on the Eurovision last year. So, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Elizabeth. What do you reckon, boys and girls? What do you reckon is going to be the new royal baby's name? John, get ready. I'm going to call you in a second. Eh? What do you reckon? Any ideas? Send your answers in now. We have a Skype. A live Skype. The Skype username is all one word. Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is the phone number. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh. No, it's not, is it? United Kingdom Talk. I'm sorry, I'm getting very confused today. United Kingdom Talk is the Skype in number. All one word, United Kingdom Talk. Or there's a phone number as well, 020 8144 okay? 020 8144 is the uh, phone number. What do you reckon is going to be the new baby's name? Or you can email your answers. If you're watching a recording of the programme, then that's okay as well. You can still join in, boys and girls, by emailing the show, chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk now sometimes you'll see my eyes dart from from the camera over to the screen because there's only me doing things and i have to do everything there's no producer someone actually uh, uh 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 offered to cut me in and push buttons and things like that the other day oh thank you for the love hearts on periscope that's much appreciated someone actually um offered to come in and push buttons but unfortunately they live half of half of about you know about an hour and a half away um in central London, or well, well, about about an hour away in central London, so not really possible to do that. Uh, Wendy says, I look very smart today. Thank you, Wendy. Now, here's a jacket. I haven't just bought this. I got this out of the cupboard. Would you like a little twirl? Those of you that are just listening to the show um, won't be able to see this. I'm wearing, like, a, a maroon jacket today. I'm now going to get up and do a little twirl for you. There we are. Look at this. It's all very nice, isn't it? Now, I've got to tell you... I have no, oh dear, I have no secrets from you, boys and girls. I'm not like a politician keeping things back, you know, like welfare cuts or tax rises. I tell you as it is. Uh, this jacket was not expensive. I bought this about six years ago, which surprises me. I can get it on my, my fat ass, dear. Have I got my jogging bottoms on? Yes, I have. <laughs> well, I don't need to change those. You can't see it, can you? Can you see my jogging bottoms? You can't. No, you can't. So, shut up. But you did guess correctly. I have my... J <laughs> There's no point in doing a downstairs bit, is it? I could be sitting here with no trousers on at all for all you know. Look. Jogging bottoms. <laughs> Can you imagine one of those lovely news readers doing that? You know. <laughs> Uh, the, the, actually, I quite like all the news readers at the moment, especially the old, the old, the older birds. There's a couple of old birds reading the news now, and I think they're really good. I like watching them. They come across as like friendly and mumsy, don't you think? And can you imagine them? You know, so they got this lovely top on and whatever, and then underneath they got an old pair of jog, jogging bottoms on. Be like my sister reading the news. To be honest, she goes around in jogging bottoms. <laughs> she does. <laughs> no trainers. No, I've got socks on. I haven't got any shoes on. Why would I need socks in here? I've got carpet on the floor. <laughs> Keep your messages coming in and I'll, I'll always answer them, OK? <laughs> so this jacket is actually, I bought this about five years ago for a school disco. And I've got a tie as well. Now, where did I put that? Just a minute. Oh, it's over there. Just a second. One minute. It came with a tie as well, see, like a school tie. And it was a, a school disco thing that I was DJing at uh, a few years ago. And we are, you just put that on there. And uh, See? Ch changes from, 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 from YouTube Periscope presenter to school u jacket to school uniform jacket. Looks quite cool, doesn't it, eh? And I've got the little grey shorts as well. I'm not sure if they still do up, though, the grey shorts. Huh? <laughs> Chris at United Kingdom Talk .co .uk. What will be the new baby's name? Do you reckon Elizabeth, Diana, 
Or Alice, please not Alice, please. Alice, Alice, who that is Alice? They'd be screaming at her at school, wouldn't they? <laughs> they used to scream things at me at school as well, you know. Buck tooth, because I had sticking out teeth. Mm, I stick out teeth like that. And Bender. I don't know why they used to call me Bender, because I didn't bend very well at all at school. I really didn't. Let's put the little caption on with the uh, Skype name and the uh, phone number there for you. You should be able to see that without a little flag in the way now. See, it's all prepared. All prepared. OK, gang, now, I just mentioned Eurovision. Uh, then, um, uh, about the, 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 uh, the money I lost on the Eurovision. We have today someone to talk to. On the, a guest, a guest, boys and girls, here on United Kingdom Talk. Can you believe that? So I'm just going to bring him up, hopefully now, on the Skype. And uh, we'll have a little chat to him, OK? Now, this is, uh, will be, oh, I'll just start the phone ringing, because this person is bringing out a okay. Eurovision CD. All right, I've just got you on hold there, Joe. John, if you could just stop your stream there. Oh, no, no, no video, please. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the video? No video, John. Oh, a minute. Oh, what's happened now? Is that off? That's it. There we are. Nice and... Hello, John. Hello. Oh, I'm echoing back there. Have you still got my stream running? And, uh, oh, yes. Hang on. Uh, if you could just stop the stream. He hasn't got a cue. He doesn't know what he's doing at all. Just there, one moment. Too. And can you turn your camera off as well, please? I will, indeed. Thank you very you much, John. You don't, want to, you, you don't want to see my face, really, do you? <laughs> no, well, they can't see it. It's only me that can see it. And it uses, okay. <laughs> uses a little bit of bandwidth. Do you know what that is, bandwidth? I is that... know all about bandwidth. Oh, it's the most annoying thing ever, dear. <laughs> Mind you, I am on my Virgin Media 152 meg down, what, 10 meg up, dear. Very good. Which I've just saved money on, but I'll come to that later on, because you're much more important. Hello, John Springate. Good morning. How are are you, you still Chris? in Spain, John? No, I'm back in the UK now. I've been back about four years. Um, oh, wow. Jeff, my partner and I, we moved back about four years ago, because unfortunately, as you know, you know the big credit crunch uh, happened. Uh, the pound matched the euro. Nobody was going out for their holidays. And, oh. you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, from the, from the singing point of view, a lot of the bars were shutting down. So, um, it, you know, we just we just had to buy the bullet and come back. Right. Um, so, yes, and, and Jeff is, is, um, is a, a Welsh lad, and he comes from a town called Mystake, which is a bit down the road from us. It's about seven miles down the road from us. But we are actually living in Port Talbot. And, um, yes, we're just getting on with life. And Jeff is your other half, is he? Yes, my, my dearly be, be, beloved partner, who's put up with me for the past 17, 18 years. How does anyone do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, managed, I managed a year once. <laughs> <laughs> with some, yeah, I, I, just, know, I, just, I did manage really. a year once. I think it was. Is what? Sorry, I managed a year once. Just oh, a year. Really? Well, that's well, that's all right. That's good going. That's not too bad, is it? I must say, my most of my relationship had been long term. I, my partner before that, John, that was ten years, and right. I was actually married before then. I was married for six years, but that was a big mistake. Yes. <laughs> was that to a woman? It was indeed. Oh, I did that as well, yeah. Well, yeah. we all live and learn, don't we, you know? Yeah. You I go, mean... why did I do that? Yeah. The well, one I... thing that was on my brain, I remember when I was in, in my sort of coming out period because we were splitting up. We were living in the same house and we were trying to sell it. It was an absolute nightmare. I wasn't actually out until... I, I didn't decide, decide to actually come out until I left the house. Right. Um, and all through my brain, what I was thinking up to that time, that, that big emotional upheaval of coming out was... I've got to make up my mind that if people have got a problem about me being gay, it's their problem. It's not my problem. Yes. And and once I think you get that into your head, I think that makes all the difference because, you know, if people have got a problem about it, they can't be good friends. You know. No, so, uh, no, no, no. You're absolutely true. I never never had a, never really had a problem at all. No. Never once. I, I I was well. I was a you know born nineteen forty nine. So you know when I was about sixteen. I mean it wasn't even legal My then. God. There were no help groups or anything. You know. So no, nineteen forty nine. Uh, I mean you shouldn't be here now to be honest. <laughs> you know. God, that is old. I thought I was the oldest one here. <laughs> I'm so pleased you've come on the show because there's someone even older than me now. <laughs> now, John. Yes. 
tell us a bit about yourself. You've bought, you've just bought out this uh, Eurovision. Is this out now? Yes, it came out uh, a week ago. Right, Eurovision YouTube. Dance Party CD. But before we talk about this, uh, yeah. tell us about your music stuff, what you've done, maybe how you started. Do you remember the very first time you started doing music and as yeah. you've come through the years? Oh, right, OK. Well, the day war broke out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sing with Vera Lynn? Were you one of her backing band? <laughs> it was Gracie Fields, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, John. Well, I started uh, when I was about... Uh, my brother had a band. He used to play shadow stuff, you know, years ago. And uh, they used to rehearse in the front room every Wednesday. And I used to watch them. I was so fascinated by the bass player. I mean, you know, from a, a, a sort of, uh, you know, not not I, not that I fancied him or anything like that. Oh, so, come I, on. Of course you do. That's the only reason I used to watch the rugby <laughs> on the Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I sort of got into bass, and then my and then I got a little bit older. My brother and I just formed a group. We, used to do, we were a three piece. We used to work South East London a lot, and we got very popular. We were doing that four nights a week, and then eventually, you know, for the both of us, we just wanted to go pro. I mean, the drummer didn't want to do it, so he left, and uh, and we got this gig in uh, with backing this girl singer, Liz Christian, um, and we worked in Canada for about eighteen months. Then. I kind of got sort of bored with it, really, because I, I, think, I didn't think, you know, anything was really going to happen while we were over there. So I, I was the one who decided I wanted to come back. Um, three weeks later, I ended up in the Glitter Band, uh, which was, a, you know, which was a long run for about five years. Um, and then after that, I, I well, I, I, I had a recording studio for about four years. Then after that, I came out and then uh, started doing solo work. But in that in that uh, in that sort of coming out time, I started to get into producing gay dance records. And you probably played a few, I should think, Chris, over the years. I'm sure. I'm sure I have over the years. Yeah. I, I, I I hate to say this, but I I really never took any notice of like the bits at the bottom. You know, produced right. by, written by. All right. I saw was um, Gloria Gaynor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't go further down. Whereas other DJs, you know, have got the most wonderful knowledge and can tell you who wrote the record, who produced yeah. it, you know, who did the little cover on the front and all that yeah, business. I know. You yeah, know, I've, so I've never been into that personally myself. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was Was there? Um, I, I'm just wondering. You You worked over the South East London. Was that in particular uh, pubs or anything like that? Do you remember yeah. what ones? Uh, yeah, well, well, see, we were we were very canny, me, me and my brother, because we decided that we were going to, you know, really sort of try and do everything we could. So we could be doing a pub in on a Thursday night. On Friday night, we could be doing a university in London, doing Cream Hendrix and and um, Cream, wow, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah. And then on a Saturday night, we could be doing a wedding and doing the Last Wars by Engelbert. <laughs> oh, I so, like that song. I'll have the last. <laughs> Last walls with you. And so we covered all the bases. So therefore, we're working about four four nights a week. And in those days, we we actually earned twelve pounds a night between the three of us, and that was good money. We were earning more money than work, working you know, doing the daytime job. And that's what really sort of prompted us to, to do to do um, you know to do it full time. We just loved it, you know. But as, you... as Winston Churchill once said. If you find a job you love, you'll never work again. Yeah, and absolutely. It's very true. That is know? so true. Let me ask you: Was it about the money? Oh yes. <laughs> it, it was always about the money from the moment you started, was it? I no, I don't think it was actually. No, I think it was a. It was something that I enjoyed doing. I, you know, the money was great. I mean, in, in the respect of earning money out of it, even better, you know. But. Right. Um, uh, no, the money, the money side never really sort of came into it. I don't think. No, it, it has done. it's always been the same with me, John. I yeah. do jobs now, and sometimes you know you think, oh, should I? Bet? Or certainly, my best mate sometimes says, "Why are you doing that for that?" And I'm like, "Because I enjoy it." Enjoy it. Yeah. I want yeah. to do it. I want to do that job. That's why. Absolutely. You know, yeah. over the years, I've been very lucky, and. Um, I can't remember. There were two bits of advice given to me once. Uh, one was by someone called Dolly DJ, who you remember from yeah, the Royal Oak and yeah. who told me, Chris, you know, if you want to be a, di if you know, if you want to drop your day job, which of course I did eventually, yeah. um, here's my advice. If you get offered the job and you have an empty night, if the money's right, 
take the job. It yeah. doesn't matter where it is, who it's for, yeah. or the or the state of the equipment. You just do it. You do it. Take do the job and yeah. take the money. Absolutely. He said, I'll give yeah. that. And someone else gave me a bit of advice, and that's gone out of my head. For my <laughs> <laughs> what was the other thing? So I, mean, I just had that on the tip of my tongue then, and I can't remember what it was now. Something to do, something to do with, um, you know. The, uh, oh yes, yes. Um, the other person said, "Look, if you love what you're doing, go yeah. and do it, and don't worry about the money. No. If you're any good, it will come on its own." That's and I've right. been extremely lucky over the years, yeah, extremely great. lucky, and yes. it has. And now, you know. Uh, Thirty odd years later, I can I can look at something and say, "Oh, I don't don't I don't think I want to drive two hours down the motorway and do that one." Do you no. know what I mean? It, oh, it's, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 at that now, so yeah. uh, I'm very very lucky indeed. Um, oh. Is there um, is there like a a particular job that or period that might stick out for you? Well, I think actually. While we're on the subject, I think doing the Eurovision Song Contest. Right. Okay. I have to say, I mean, what? I, I've actually been involved in it twice. I did. I did one song with Kelly, yes. um, which was oh, I can't even remember when it was out. But we got into the final eight, and it was a song called "Better Be Good to Me." Were you beat? Was that the one you were beaten by Emma? Or yeah, give me a little it, love back to the world. Yeah, it was that one. Yeah, they, yes, they went for the yeah. cute little girl because I, if I remember rightly, that there was a few children in the year before, was there? Or yeah, yeah. and I, I think, think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I, I have to say, I'm not a big avid follower of Eurovision in much as much as I know all the details and stuff like that. You know, probably I'm probably more involved in it when i'm doing something involved with it if you if you get my drift you know yes but, uh, but yeah i mean a, a lot of the years i don't really know I, I, can, I can remember the bad points you know when uh you know some certain, certain singers you know become out of out of tune and stuff oh, like that gosh and, yes uh, yes gemini Oh, 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 I don't oh, want to mention oh, names, no. Oh, but. And we couldn't hear the back in track. We couldn't hear <laughs> the back in track. And do you remember that time? Um, I think eighties Bandido from possibly Portugal. They right. came on the stage yeah. and the music started, and they just stood there because they couldn't hear it at all in the studio. And then Terry Wogan says, "I think they're going to start again," and it all stopped. And they went off the stage and came on again. Ah, don't remember that one. Ah. And another one, which I, uh, which was from from the BBC, unfortunately, yeah. and like. I think minutes before they all went on strike, so it didn't happen. <laughs> Do you not remember that? I don't remember that. Oh one. yeah, yeah. It was all sitting there waiting. I mean, yeah. and well, then... I mean, from the Kelly days, I mean, a lot of things have changed. I mean, there's, there's still, still, you know, the, the, the main rule is that the song cannot be longer than three minutes. It has to come in in three minutes. But yeah. certainly with backing track now, I mean, that's that's helped a hell of a lot in terms of instead of orchestra. Know, for, in, in terms, I mean, I know, I know, it's nice to see the orchestra there, but but in terms of keeping the timing right, uh, the quality of the track, etc., you know, it it's it's much better in in in, uh, in that respect. But they have relaxed a lot of the rules, though, you know, in regards to promotion and stuff like that. You yeah. Know? Um, Don, Don wants to know, um, what do you think of this year's track? I think it's really quirky. You like it? Yeah, I kind of like it. Although I have to say, um, they've changed the rules once again in as much as for a, for a good period, the BBC oh. were deciding that they were going to select the song, select the singers. Yes, who has chosen it this year? And Sorry? Who has chosen it this year then? Well, what, what I don't know. They've, what, what's happened is they, they've put it, uh, they've, they've allowed the public to enter as well. You know, so, so, so would be songwriters or songwriters like myself can put a song in. Yeah. And I did put one in, but unfortunately it didn't go through. But the, what they did say, there was a selected um, sort of judging panel. Who they were, I don't know, you know. But I, you know, I do sometimes wonder with the BBC whether or not they want actually to win because, you know, that they've got their budgets sorted out for programmes like Strictly Come Dancing, which yeah. are... You know, which a lot of these programs have got a big budgets, and Eurovision is just like a massive one, really yes, massive yes. one. So Millions. whether or not they really want us to win, you know, that that I I just wonder if that does come into it. Having said that, I mean, I think this is really this is really a good uh, something different. It really is good. 
because it's very quirky. I like it. I do like it. It's good. Right. So, Don, for Don reckons it's okay, fingers crossed. If you've got any comments, you can send those in either on the, the Periscope uh, 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 messaging thing or Skype, boys and girls, Skype username, United Kingdom Talk, or send it in on an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and I'll read them out uh, uh, for John there, okay? Don't be shy, you know, send your little bits and pieces in. Keep them clean. Keep them clean. <laughs> I was just, just saying to you, yeah, in South East London, do you remember the names of the places you used to play there at all? Are oh, they, yes. Are they still uh, existing? Well, there was the Tiger's Head in Catford. Right. Uh, the Bell Tabber Inn, which is a big venue up in um, Down and Down and Way. It was Down and Way. Yeah. Uh, the Green Man over at Blackheath. Uh, that's that 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 actually got pulled down, but did it? Yeah. It was a, it was a great venue. That uh, there was a Green the uh, the Green Man in Plumstead, yes. where if there wasn't a fight every week, you wouldn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> But this was all part of it. That's how it was then, there's, isn't it? There's loads. Of, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was there was oh, loads of venues in those days yeah. for bands. We got. Absolutely. I remember. I remember we did the Tigers Ever Night. We were supporting the Love Affair. Oh uh, yes, yes, and, yes. And they just got to number one with Everlasting Love. That yeah, I know the song. And they weren't happy because the venue had booked them about six months in advance for like forty quid, <laughs> and. <laughs> And suddenly, I mean, this record just came out of nowhere. I mean, I don't remember. It was number one, like, immediately, you know. Yeah. It was just brilliant record, absolutely wonderful production. And and they weren't happy because it, they were on 40 quid. <laughs> uh, well, the, well, the bad news is Kelly Kim has just uh, messaged us to tell us um, she's from Downham. Yeah, all right. Uh, yes, and the Tiger's Head has been pulled down. Has it really? Oh. <gasps> well, it's not the oh, only one. Dear. You know, you do know the Black Caps closed, don't you? I know, I know. Unbelievable. And that is so, so sad. Unbelievable. I did a couple yeah. of shows on that um, with a few interview, uh, views and that uh, a couple of weeks. I don't know if you saw yeah. them. I'll stick them on your wall if you didn't see them. But, right. uh, yeah, a, 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 a real great show. And, of course, you know what's happened to it? Kelly Kim uh, says it's become Flats. It's flats. More yeah. blooming flats. Have you driven around London recently? Do you know what? I don't oh. get to London but very much, Chris. But oh. when, I, when I do come up, some areas just astound me. Yeah. Uh, you know, when yeah. I'm going through, I'm thinking, I don't remember any of this. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. sometimes I have to get the sat nav out. You know, yeah. Just... yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know it's... Um, it's, uh, I mean, some for good, some for better. I don't know. I mean, there's a worry about the Vauxhall Tavern as well, isn't yes, there? Yes, that was another pub coming down, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, but I remember going back years. I mean, there's always been this rumour about the box all being pulled down. Oh, it was the same with the Black Cap. Two pubs in London, boys and girls, um, that, yeah. that have been there for years and years. Mm. Uh, you might have seen the previous show, Black Cap. I, I mean, literally 50, yeah. 60, 70 years it's been there. And that's about to become flats and what have you. Anyway, back to the, the whole Eurovision <laughs> thing. Yes. So you've got this new DVD coming out. Yes. Is it out or coming? It's out. It's out. out. Okay. Uh, Eurovision. Out. Out Eurovision Dance Party. Okay. Yep. It's called. I'm just showing them the disc there. Okay. There it is. Now, um, you don't actually have to buy the whole album, do you, John? No, no. You can buy individual. If you go on uh, iTunes, you can buy individual tracks if you want to. Um, and and it is. And it is available in a hard form. Uh, excuse the phrase. Uh, <laughs> on my website, which is. Uh, johnspringate.com uh, johnspringate.com yeah. and there are 10 tracks on there of course th this is very different now how we how we buy music now no, no one has to buy a whole album anymore do they no, do you no, think that's no. made you more sort of not not you really but a, a lot of artists more careful about how many tunes they put on an album if you see what i mean you know that so uh, I won't pull a name out. You might have an artist with like ten. Uh, what was what was an album? About twelve tracks, wasn't it? Twelve ten? tracks, usually. About twelve yeah. tracks, yeah. yeah. And you yeah. might have four good ones, yeah. and sometimes the other ones. You'd think to yourself, well, have they just put those on there to fill in the time? Yeah. Do you think that's made them more careful about the amount of songs that they put on there? Or I th well, I think I think it's made people more selective anyway. Mm. You know about what they buy. Um, whether or not they'll change that whole process of making it so you have to buy the whole album. Yes. I don't know. Uh, they haven't done so so far, but you, you sometimes wonder whether that will be, be the case. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Typical one, that one, Chris. In, yeah. I mean, in, you, uh, 
You've got ten tracks on here. What what you've done? Yeah. About, tell us what you've done, basically. Oh, don't, oh don't, don't, don't put me in the spot. I've got it in front of me. What have I oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> we, you've string. got ten tracks on here. I'll, I'll name them for you. Puppet on a string. One step further. Hold me in. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll do better. I'll do better than John. I shall sing the title of each song. Are you ready? So here yeah, we go. Cool. You've got ten tracks on here. I wonder if one day that. So let's pop it on the string. There's yeah. one step further, and I would have been there. That's track two. One step yeah. further. Hold me now. From is that Johnny Logan? That one. Johnny Logan. Yeah. Johnny Logan number three. Number four. Ding a dong every hour when you pick a flower, <laughs> even when your lover is gone, gone, gone. Yes, ding a dong number four. Number five, let it swing and let it rock and roll. Okay, let it swing. Number six, don't play that song again. The trouble is, no one did. <laughs> did they? You know, that track number six, the lovely Nikki Friends. Number seven, I wonder if one day that you say that you care like a no 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 no, no. I'm just a jack in a box. That's, the one. That's number seven. <laughs> number eight. Why me? By the lovely <laughs> Linda Martin. Number nine. Well, I can't sing that one. No. Well, actually, I did an instrumental on that one. I didn't no, I'd, do I'd like to have a little listen to that. I'll, Dare I put this on? Because YouTube have got very strict rules about playing music. Um, whether or not you say, I, I know you're saying now, that's okay, Chris, you can play it. But they won't know that you've said that, you see. That's I know, trouble. I know. Um, and I risk being cut off in right. midstream. No, I'm, I'm not going to play it. Uh, so Nocturne, which yep. was the uh, Norwegian, a beautiful song. If you've never heard that one, look it up, Nocturne on... Yep. Um, on your music players or something. And number 10, of course, uh, I get, uh, making your mind up, making That's your fun. mind up. So they're the 10 tracks on there, but these are not original, are they? You've, you've oh. remade them. What have you done to them? Well, I've, I've just given them a sort of dance beat really. And you know, if anybody's having a party, if they're having a Eurovision party at home, uh, it might be something they might want to put on, you know, as a warm up to, to the show. And, and all the song, all, they're all been sung by, great singers that I knew when I was working out in Spain um, and uh, I think they all sort of match the, the, the tracks quite wonderfully I mean they're not sound alikes or anything like that, we're not talking about embassy records Okay <laughs> <laughs> There you are Chris, I, I thought I'd touch a vein there Oh you're so naughty darling, you're so very I've not got a clue what you're going on about to be honest but there we are <laughs> No, let me tell you about NBC Records. Tell us, tell us. NBC Records yes, uh, were yeah. made by Warworths, okay? Warworths. In the 60s. Now, if you couldn't afford the, the real version of a song, which was like six and threepence, okay, you could always get the Embassy label version, which was about four and three. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Embassy, Embassy uh, uh, did these sound-alikes, you know, and they were very good. They really sounded like the okay. real thing. Yeah, it was yeah, amazing. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, be on the lookout for Embassy Records. There you go. <laughs> well, maybe they come back. You never know. You never know. So <laughs> out of these ten tracks, um, did you... Were, did you start these off with these ten, or did you like have a list and say, "Oh no, not that one. Oh yeah, that one's good. No, not uh, that one." Is yeah, it a bit I, like I, that? I, I was actually sit down with Jeff, my partner, because he is a bit of a Eurovision buff. Yeah, and um, we we sort of went through the the most popular ones. Of course, I mean, I know. Don't play that song again. That uh, we, I did with Nikki wasn't a hit. I thought it was a bloody good song, but, to be honest. Uh, oh, really oh, dancey. I loved it. Thank you very it. much. Um, but, um, I mean, we had a fantastic time in, yeah. in Stockholm, I have to say. I mean, it was the, it was the best time ever. I mean, for, the, for us, the writers, it was a busman's holiday. I mean, we were, the, we were there just to sort of yes. be there in, in, in case we won. But, you know, all the, all the hard work was with Nicky and, and the singers, and they, they, were, they were, you know, they, they did really well. I mean, and it's funny, as the week goes on, you don't really know, Who's really going to win? I mean, you, you you hear the songs so many times in the process of them rehearsing. Yes, you, you just don't know. And the also the the, the the Olsen brothers won it, and the reason that now this is the you know the whole political voting status that we go on about is alive and well. The Olsen brothers uh, were a, a, a duo from from Denmark, and they 
uh, and they were very similar to like their version of the Everly Brothers. Okay. And they were very, very popular. Very dream. popular. Dream, yes. dream, dream, dream. <laughs> That's the yes. one. Uh, so they were very popular in the Scandinavian countries. So all the Scandinavian countries voted for the Olsen brothers. Yeah. You know, and that's and as a song, well, I mean, you could have blown us down because we thought, hey, awful. We well, it was all right. You know, what? Why I kicked myself is that I, when I got back to London, I didn't immediately do a, the dance version of "Fly on the Wings of Love," right. which somebody did. Somebody actually did yeah, it. You know, yeah, so, yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. But what's the um like when you go to this? You, I, I've never been to your Eurovision Song Contest. You see, well, it's, um, it's, I, I, it's full of mad people. I'd I love mean, to go. In the, I would in the love most to wonderful go one, way. Yeah. I mean, all the Euro buffs are great. I mean, yeah. they, they they you know they they're, they're constantly all around you, and yeah. they're you know sort of I don't know, they they just they, they go there for the fun of it. But all but but they're. They're you know just really nice people you know, mm. um, and as I say, I mean it, it's just a wonderful moment. The great thing is because because you're there anyway, you feel as though you've won anyway because yes. you, could, you 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 did it for the UK, and if you win actually win Eurovision, it's a bit of icing on the cake. You know, it's great. Um, and of course, we did the deal with BMG. We did it with I did the deal with Simon Cow. Um, because uh, it's funny because we had two record companies after us after we uh, after we'd actually won the song for Europe. Uh, we had EMI after us and um, and Simon and EMI. Well, I mean, if if ever, if ever there was a case of harassment, oh, really? uh, the, oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I've never been in that situation where I've, been, I've had a record company ringing me five times a day asking me if I've made a decision yet who I'm going to go with. Gosh. And uh, and Jerry, who I wrote the song with, we, you know, we 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 decided that we went. To go with Simon because with BMG they're much stronger in Europe. So if we did win, you know, it, they, they would be able to look after it. You know, so um, and I knew Simon anyway before. You know, all oh, right, yeah. You know, before those sort of um, X Factor. There. In fact, this happened a year before he started X Factor and all the, you know, the, um, you know, all those shows. Um, but it's like, it's really interesting watching him. You know, it's like. It's like Paul O'Grady, you know. Oh what? yes, I, Lily Savage. I used to be uh, Dog and Fox in Wimbledon. I know, and, it, and I know these people, and it's just like so fascinating to watch them. And it's like they are who they are. I mean, you know, Simon's very. Well, I much... didn't. I didn't get anywhere. I'm still here in my little spare bedroom doing YouTube shows. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I but it doesn't mean. matter because I love doing it. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not really interested in big money or anything like that. Never was. No. Really? Absolutely. So, John, where can we buy this from, please? Okay, you can buy it from iTunes, Amazon, a few other places as well. Uh, but iTunes is the ideal one. And also, if you want a hardback version, um, it will be in the post immediately. And you can get that from my website, which is johnspringate.com. Absolutely marvellous. Thank you, John, for coming on and chatting to us. And You're very keep welcome. Try and put those songs in for the Eurovision, my darling. Okay. <laughs> Cheerio, John. All the best. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. There we are. John Springate, uh, ex from the Glitter Band, and uh, uh, he's got this new album out, Eurovision Dance Party. If you're a fancy of the Eurovision Song Contest. Okay, boys and girls. Uh, you can still join in. Plenty of time, gang. It's only 20 to 1. You can join in either by telephone, 020. Eight one double four three four double seven, or Skype. United Kingdom Talk is my Skype in name. United Kingdom Talk, or indeed on Periscope. Just type in your message, and I'll read it out. Okay. Uh, Wendy says Alice and Charlotte are the bookie's favourite names. Apparently, I like Charlotte. Charlotte's a lovely name, isn't it? Do you remember that book, Charlotte's Web, about the little spider? Spiders everywhere. Oh no, two went up the hoover this week. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I don't like to do that, to be honest. Um, but, and they were only small ones. They were on the ceiling and I thought, if I leave that, it's going to become a big one. Because about a year ago, was it a couple of years ago now, this massive one suddenly crawled across the carpet in front of me. Then I watched it go up the curtain and it perched itself at the top of the... Um, of the curtain rail. What? Looking at me. It was looking at me at the top of the curtain rail. Outrageous, dear. Outrageous. Uh, good morning, Paul. Who says, Periscope is about a minute ahead of YouTube. Just saying. OK, yeah, that doesn't matter to me, really. Um, but thanks for telling us. Uh, good morning to Jerry. He's with us on the Skype as well now. 
hello, Joey. We've got some uh, email here. I've got to read this email out. Uh, which has actually been waiting here for a week. And news, news, boys and girls, about a £420,000 cheque. Yes, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Who's cruel? Why am I cruel, Wendy? Why am I cruel? What have I done to be cruel? I might have missed a point here, Wendy. Tell me what I've done. Uh, Marge sends in an email because I had a bit of a bad pro problem with my back last week. And Marge says, sorry to hear about your back. I deal with so many joint pains. I think I've become an expert in pain management. Yeah, Marge is a, a regular viewer to the show and a correspondent as well and sends in little bits and pieces. Um, she says, you wouldn't realise that if you do not have ointment for pain, you can use peppermint oil. It's great for headaches. Also rubbed on the temples. Just don't get it in your eyes. Or oh, quite like a bit of temple rubbing. Is anyone would like to volunteer to come round immediately and rub my, my temples, please? Oh, that's quite nice, that is. Especially under the glass. Do you like the way the glasses are coming up? <laughs> oh, Wendy thinks I'm crawl hoovering up a spider. Wendy, if I could have got to it, I would have done with a glass and a piece of paper. But it was on the ceiling and I couldn't get to it. So I'm sorry the hoover had to come. I'm sorry, darling. I really am sorry. I'll probably invade it now with flies, won't I? Flies will invade me. <laughs> and there'll be no spiders to eat the things up. Marge carries on to say, uh, even on back of the neck, it's quick and safe. And of course, it's not for long term pain, but can fix. Uh, you can use it if you have nothing else. I drink a daily shot of tart cherry juice, which has elevated most of my arthritis pain as yet. It relieves it by natural anti-inflammatory properties in the juice. Nature had a lot of natural aid and cures for many eels, uh, which I believe, actually, I think uh, a lot of uh, nature's thing can, can do wonders for pain and indeed other sorts of illnesses. I do actually believe um, that the Brazilian rainforests, I think they contain a lot of things and we must stop cutting these places down. You know, we're destroying, I think, the very... Um, things that can cure us of stuff by mowing down rainforests and things like that. It's awful. Had sad news today. I found out that my brother Matthew had died in 2012 that I was raged with. He was 49. I actually didn't correspond with him much over the years uh, after he got with his girlfriend and such. So I didn't know he'd been ill. Oh, that's that's a shame. That's a shame. Um... Kelly Kim says, did you know that every second a football pitch is cut down in rainforests? Oh, I'm not surprised. Oh, it's awful, Kelly. And we need these trees for the oxygen. They've got to stop chopping these trees down. Anyway, back to this. Um, I found it online, says Marge, when they trying to find him to tell him about my mother was passed away. Say so lost contact as well. They said he had a lung problems as such. Not seeing him in many years, it wasn't as hard. But I did sit and recall many of the good times we did uh, have in our youth. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Marge. You know, I'm very lucky, really. I've um, I've got a a lovely sister. I get on with like a house on fire. I know I do have jokes on here quite a lot about my sister, but I don't. You know, I don't mean any of it. I mean, for example, the day I was talking to my niece who was sitting in front of a window, but far back. And I suddenly noticed an eclipse, like a big dark shadow came over her. And it was, and it was my sister passing between the window and my niece. And I did promise not to tell you about that to my sister earlier, but I've just broken my promise. Sorry, sis. <laughs> I said to her, if you don't want me to say anything, then you'll have to send me uh, uh, two bags of homemade homemade uh, fudge. Uh, Kelly says, I want to meet this notorious sister of yours. I'm sorry, Kelly. No, darling. Kelly Kim, no. No. No, you you can't meet my sister, darling. It's a bit like, um, you know Medusa? When people used to turn to stone when they looked at her. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, bring, I can't possibly ever bring my sister out. I really can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> Paul Edwards says Periscope is fantastic, Chris. Watch out for live from the golf course. Oh, it is. It's the best app ever. Uh, coming soon on Android. Not available on Android yet. Periscope is only available at the moment on um on iPhone, okay, my darlings. Um, Wendy says, hoovering up the spiders. I don't mind spiders as long as they don't crawl on me. If they do, I do my best karate impersonation. He ta chow, hoi chow, karate ta chow. Was that racist? Come on, was that racist? Hey chow, wow, karate. Was that racist? I've I've got this thing about at the moment about about stupid people who shout racist at the slightest thing. You know, to me, racism is is not about... <laughs> Kelly Kim screaming racist at me now. No, you've got to do it in capitals, Kelly Kim, or it doesn't work. Block capitals. Um, I, I, I've got this thing about racism, right? You know, uh, that, yeah, indeed, if you, if you say to someone, you nasty black whatever, that's racism to me. Having a joke with someone is not racism. And I don't even think it's a fine line. I think it's a thick line. And if you look to be offended by anything, you will indeed be offended. I, I, I really believe that. We have an Asian guy, such a lovely man, who comes into the karaoke on Sunday nights uh, at the Cherry Tree. There's karaoke every Sunday night at the Cherry Tree in East Dulwich. Grove Vale, 7 p.m. till, well, we seem to have got to 12 now, till, till midnight. It's supposed to be 11, but the last few weeks it's been midnight. Um, and we have this Asian man, and some of the notes he sends to me, even I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you. I mean, they're so racist against his own race. <laughs> but it's not racism to me. You see, it's, it's, it's having a laugh. It's a joke. And there's too many people out there who... who who have got nothing better to do than look for offence all the time. I really do believe that. Back to the email. Um, Marge says she saw a picture of my garden. I don't think I've got a picture of the garden. Oh, do you know what? I had two pictures lined up of John Springate here for you to look at. And I didn't do them, did I? Never mind. Oh, how stupid. Waste of time doing those, wasn't it? I should have done those. Never mind. Um... I did show a picture of my flowers this week on one of my short videos. Now, if you didn't know as well, I do, as well as doing Periscope videos, I do a couple of those a day now, live videos on Periscope. My Periscope username is Chris Reardon UK, Chris Reardon UK. I also do um, an almost daily talk show, uh, little short videos, and then a long one on Saturdays. And you can find the short ones by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Um, Marge saw the pictures of my flowers. She said they're beautiful. I had to order some morning glories. <laughs> oh, where I don't think that I think that means something different in America than it does here, does it? <laughs> oh, Marge. <laughs> oh, Marge, I love you, darling. I love you. Sometimes Marge and I are um, <laughs> are having conversations and I'll say something like the word pussy. Now, pussy in the UK means cat, as in pussycat, not in America. And you've just, just used the term morning glories. So well done, Marge. That means something else here. <laughs> um, oh, Don wants to know, how's my mate's uh, cuckoo clock? Going very well. I bought him a cuckoo clock for his birthday. It's a, a battery-operated one, very modern, very modern. Um, I had to order some morning glories from Amazon. <laughs> what are they? I'm going to have a look. Just a minute. I've got to have a look at this. Amazon. Amazon. What was a morning glory? Let me just have a quick look. I don't know what it will come up as on the on the UK, because it's the UK version of uh, Amazon that I've got, of course. <laughs> I thought that would amuse you, Wendy. Morning Glory. I've just got... Oh, OK. Seeds. They're seeds. 150 seeds. Oh, they look beautiful. Hang on a minute. Morning Glory. They are beautiful. Little blue flowers, aren't they? £1.49. Is that all? Oh. When do you plant them? Soak seeds overnight. 
late spring. Oh, I've still got time. I'm going to order some. Add one. Adding. Oh, no. Oh, damn. I want to do what? I've, ordered, I've just ordered some. I've just... Do I want to order those or not? Oh, I don't, I, do you know, I can't always be bothered to grow things from seeds. I'm a bit lazy. I buy the pre-made pre ones. Um... Don says he's not had one of those for a long time. What a morning glory. You can buy them on Amazon, mate, now. <laughs> you, can buy them on, you can buy them on Amazon, Don. <laughs> what does morning glory mean? Do tell. No, you go and have a look on the internet, Wendy. This is the family programme. My nephew might be watching this. I'm not talking about that sort of thing, thank you very much, on this programme. Family rated. You. No, is it C for children? What is it? I don't know. Normal one, normal one. Back to this. I ordered some from Amazon because no one sells them locally. I thought of putting them over my sitting place in an arch above the chair because uh, Marge's got, she's got a lovely yard. Uh, Marge is in Oklahoma, USA. Either that or some other climbing vine. What would you suggest for good coverage, easy kept climbing vine, the flowers? Oh, I don't know. Um, here, I would suggest... Jasmine, beautiful smell of jasmine, or what's the yellow? Honeysuckle. Jasmine or honeysuckle, I would suggest, for really nice, fragrant flowers. At, and they climb very, very quickly. Jasmine or honeysuckle. Try those. Um, she says, so you've lost two of your work business. Does that now cut back on much of your weekly work? No, because I've picked up more. I've, uh, I, lost, I only lost one night, didn't I? No, I gave it up. I gave up one night. Did I lose something? Hang on a minute, let me look at my calendar. Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, I've, I only, I, I left one job, right, um, which was the Mayflower. That was for the quiz night I was doing because the, they put in this new sound system which just did not work for me. It was just awful, awful, and it was embarrassing. It's a shame. I love the job. I love the venue. I love the people. I love the staff. I loved it all. But they put in this new sound system and it just did not work for me. It was cut, out, 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 like that all the bloody time. You can't do the job. It's embarrassing. So I left. And then, you know, as luck would have it, the very next day, I got an email saying someone's looking for a karaoke on Tuesday night. So I picked up the phone. I don't hang around, you know, and bang, straight away. And we started last Tuesday immediately. No break or anything for the Tuesdays. And it worked really well. We had a fantastic Tuesday. And the next Tuesday karaoke is indeed on Tuesday, nine o'clock at the Golden Lion in Royal College Street in Camden Town. Do join us for that, OK? So that's karaoke at the Golden Lion, Royal College Street, Camden Town, Tuesday night, nine till 12 p.m., OK? Um, Marge says, if you decided to stop working altogether, could you and retire now? Yes, I could. I could. But I wouldn't want to. What would I do? I mean, I'll, I'll probably do even more of these annoying shows that no one watches. <laughs> I could, but I've, I've no interest in retiring, really. I think, um, would you call it entertainment type jobs? Um, generally, I don't think people want to retire from them. I think you are retired from them. There has been certain jobs that I've had that I have been retired from and I do, do believe it's because uh, of my age. You know, it's like a young thing. There are certain places you wouldn't expect me to see DJing. Thank you, Dom loves the shows. Thank you very much, Dom. I appreciate that, mate. Um, where are you, by the way, Dom? Where are you? You might have told me before. I can't remember. Where are you, Dom? Um, yes, and I think, you know, sometimes your face has to fit into a certain type of thing. So I think there was a couple of places that I've been retired uh, as I've looked older. And that that's really hurtful. They don't tell you. That really hurts. But you, you move on to other things. I think you can make the mistake of trying to stay in one place. Gold is green. Oh, that's a, is that, that's a good Jewish area, isn't it? Gold is green. Are you Jewish? My best friend's Jewish. Golders Green, I believe that's a very, very Jewish area. In fact, two of my, and um, I've got one friend, yes and no. So you're Jewish, but you don't 
practice. Is that about right? Sort of? Huh? My best friend's Jewish, Ronnie. And I've got a very, uh, another very, very good friend who lives around that area. And he's Jewish as well. Yeah, I thought, I thought that'd be about right. It's a bit like the old Catholics, isn't it? You know, you're a Catholic, but you don't do anything with it. Well, I'm Catholic. I do go to church, but I'm not always a good boy. I cannot lie to you, boy. I cannot lie. Well, I, I, actually, as I've got older, I've had to be, I've had to be good because the offers are not coming anymore. They're not coming back, back to Marge. Um, I love being retired and having so much to do now than I ever have before. Till next time. And that's uh, from the lovely Marge. Marge also sent in a little bit of audio, which I'm going to try and play now. And then I've got a couple of uh, emails to read out that have uh, come in in the last couple of minutes. OK, so here's a little bit of audio for Marge. And let's hear what she's got to say this week. No audio. Let's try this one. Try this one. Hi, Chris. This is Marge from Oklahoma. I'm just commenting on the Friday 24th of April 2015 video. Excuse me. I have a little bit of an allergy attack today. Can't hardly breathe. But I, I was, I got tickled. Uh, oh, by the way, Ron, I'm sorry about your back. I hope you get feeling better quickly. Uh, you reminded me of a married couple, uh, of course, a woman and a man, who, uh, well, the woman gets pregnant, you know, the, the husband will have sympathy pain sometimes, you know, he'll feel some of the pain his wife's going through, and here he, uh, Ron, has uh, back pain, and you, you had the last video, you had back pain. Uh, I just kind of got tickled thinking about that. Uh, sympathy pains for another. Which that means you're very close if that's true. I know that's not what happened to your back. But anyway, I'm easily amused. Uh, I can't talk much more. My nose is suddenly stopped up. I can barely breathe. I'm going to go take my allergy medicine. But my yard's looking good. My potatoes are growing big and everything's. We have a good rain this year after our drought. So it's going to be wonderful pretty flowery <laughs> uh, Oklahoma anyways talk to you later goodbye this is Marge thank you Marge now Marge actually sent that in last week I have to say that you got you said I like got the worst ever cold there Marge hope you've recovered from that my darling thank you for sending that in Marge uh, a couple of emails uh, first of all from Mike hello Mike who says love the glasses do you like these these are, these are actually the prescription ones. I've got three sets of glasses. I've got one set of prescription ones, which are these ones. But I've also got two, two sets that I got from the supermarket. And th there's like different ones on a shelf, different strengths. And you literally, you, you stand back from this thing on the wall, like a bit of writing. I'll use John Springate's Eurovision Dance Party CD. Oh, which has just fallen out. And... You, you try these glasses on and then you so so you're holding sight like something like a little bit you know far away and it looks blurred and then you try on the glasses until it looks okay and they're the ones you buy and they're only like 10 quid each really you know i don't think i'll buy another set of prescription well actually are, are these any better i think these are probably a little bit better than the ones in the supermarket but the supermarket ones are okay you've seen me wear them on the show you know, they're fine, they're fine. Mike says, love the glasses, looking good. As for the background wallpaper paint, you seem to have changed from UKIP to conservative, purple to blue. No, it's still the same. It's still, no, that's purple. And it's nothing to do with political parties. It's just the colour of the wallpaper. And it's not wallpaper either, it's a, it's a fabric, thank you. That's purple. That's actually purple. Does it look blue to you today? Maybe that's, um, oh, I see what you mean now. Yeah, on the live, it probably does look a little bit blue, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I think it probably does look a little bit blue there. Yeah, okay. Um, I think, I have a feeling the live viewers have lost our, um, have lost the show. I think it looks like the, uh, the internet's gone down there. But never mind, we're nearly finished now. But yeah, it looks blue to you as well. Did our internet just go down? Oh, sorry. So the YouTube people have lost the show, have they? Never mind. Oh, dear. Well, never mind. We'll carry on a little bit because uh, we've still got the recording to finish off. And um, is it a subliminal way of swaying votes? No, it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not indeed. And uh, Kelly Kim writes, for why I haven't watched your show, I, th I think the Periscope people are still there, so for why I haven't watched your show sooner, I have no idea. You do a wonderful job. Graham D Norton has met his match. Oh, I don't know about that, Graham Norton. He's all right, Graham, isn't he? He's all right, Graham. Can you do a Periscope London live talk with you commenting on the Eurovision? Would listen to you instead of Graham. It would be fun. You should also buy an amaryllis plant. What's an amaryllis plant? Oh, an amaryllis. Yeah, I know what an amaryllis plant. Oh, they're beautiful. They are. I think the YouTube people are back with us. Uh, we lost the connection there. I don't know why, boys and girls. Those of you watching the live show. Actually, I'll, I'll just read the... The two emails here again because the YouTube people would have missed those. Uh, Kelly Kim watches uh, says, "Why well, haven't watched your show sooner? I have no idea. You do a wonderful job." Graham Norton has met his man. I like Graham Norton's show, although I didn't think he was very good on that Eurovision party show. That just looked awful. I don't know what what went wrong there. He looked like he needed a bloody good wash and a shave. But I like his. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But we all do bad shows now and again, don't we? Um, I think most of mine are bad, to be honest. I can't lie to you. Can you do a Periscope London live talk with you commenting on the Eurovision? Kelly Kim, I did that once. Uh, actually, more than once. I think I did it four times in a certain in in a couple of different venues where we had the Eurovision on the screen. OK, we had the audio from the Eurovision coming through. But where they did the commentating bit, I faded down and I commentated myself. So I did actually do that. I did do uh, a Eurovision commentated thing. What you mean? I should do it on 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 Paris? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I won't be able to. I think I'm. What's the date of that? Eurovision. Someone got a date for me. Is it the um? Is it the sixteenth of May? I'm not sure of the Eurovision date. Can you have a quick look for us, someone? Yeah. Uh, you should also buy an amaryllis plant. I, they're beautiful, they are. I shall look into that, Kelly Kim. Thank you for your gardening advice. Gardening with Kelly Kim on the United Kingdom Talk. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Mike also says you went off air. Yeah, we're back now, Mike. Sorry about that. That does happen. I've just lost the connection. Because yesterday, and I have a feeling that's because I changed my... um. Uh, uh, I spoke to Billing yesterday at Virgin Media because they the bill suddenly went up five pounds so i checked my bill and indeed it had gone up five pounds and what it was the 23rd of may so what day is that thank you kelly kim and uh 23rd of may oh i'm in coventry that night no i won't be able to do it i won't be able to do a, a conversation thank you wendy telling me 23rd of may oh thank you john thank you john um yeah so i won't be able to do that uh but yeah maybe maybe next year Maybe next year I'll take the day off and commentate on the Eurovision via Periscope. Would you like that? Should we give that a go? <laughs> um, now, where was I? What was I just talking about? Oh, yes, yes. So Virgin Media, so it went off. It Rory, Rory could do it. Our friend Rory. He's one of the barmen at the uh, Cherry Tree on Sundays. And he's been chatting me up for ages, but I keep pushing him back. You know, I mean... Far too young for me. He's about like 23, I think, and I'm 52. Far too young, far too young. Um, so I rang up Virgin Media and I said, yes, it's gone up far. Yes, yeah, you've come to the end. I said, right, I've been looking at my bill and I notice I've got a phone line here. Hello. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. I'm above his league. Am I? You don't believe that for one moment, Kelly Kim. You've got your witches out on again, darling. You're stirring spells. <laughs> Um, and I said, well, I noticed I've got a phone line, 1699. Morning, Michael. Um, I don't need that. I'll take that off. OK, sir, please can I put you through to someone else? Anyway, cut a long story short, which I'm not known on doing. They put me through to um, someone else who said, OK, well, we can do you a deal here. Blah, 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 blah. And from £49, it came down to £40 a month. That's a considerable saving. Don't think, eh, it's just £9. No, it's not. That is nearly £120 a year. Not to be sniffed at. £120 a year by picking up the phone saying, no, I don't want my phone line. Take it off. 
get put through to someone else. He said, well, you can keep your phone line, cost you on top of your broadband, which I've got the 152 meg one, we'll charge you an extra pound a month for the phone. How's that sound? Yes, please. Thank you. Done. So I saved myself nine pounds there a month. Very pleased with that. And uh, finally today, um, if you've been watching my uh, short videos this week, which you can find at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, everything I do is on there, okay? If you've been watching my short videos this week, you will know that this week I paid into my bank account a little check. Not a large check, a little check. Anyway... I don't know what happened, but somewhere, someone put in a few extra noughts on the paying in desk, whatever that's called. I don't know what it's called, you know, the, the reception where you go and pay things in instead of putting it in a machine. Because I'm, I'm never really happy putting money in a machine. I do do it. I do do it, but I'm never really happy. I'd rather go to someone on the till or something like that. And I'm going to check my bank account a little bit later on when I went in. Let's just see if that check had gone in. £420,000. And I'm like, what? £420,000. Well, I really didn't know what to do. I did not know what to... I thought, oh my God, you know, do you just leave it and hope that they don't notice? I knew one thing you must never do is go out and spend it because that would be theft. You get, I mean, you get in terrible, terrible trouble if you went out and spent that money. I mean, you really would. Did I run, Don said? No, didn't run. Didn't run. Some people would go to a cash machine and start drawing that out, wouldn't they? And I thought, I thought what do I do? do I, shall I leave it for a while? I'll leave it for a while and see what happens, but I, could, I couldn't do it. I'm too honest. I went to the bank the next morning, and I didn't take the money, no, Joey. I went to the bank the next morning, and I told them. I said, look, someone's made a mistake here. Here's what should be in there. And this is what they're given because they give you a receipt when you put checks in. And in fact, actually, the receipt that they gave me said £420,000 as well. I didn't look at it. I didn't check it then. And to be honest, they were very blasé about it all. Like as if it's like a normal thing to happen. They didn't seem that I went to the same girl on the till and anything. And she said, oh, I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Just a minute. She'd come back and she'd come back with a photocopy of the check. Which indeed said the correct figure, which it should have been. She said, I'm very sorry about that. We'll sort that out by the end of the day, Mr. Reardon. And that was it. That was it. It was like they weren't even bothered. She said, do you know, we didn't even pick that up on the on the end of day, whatever it is they, that they do at the end of the day. I don't know. They weren't even bothered. So I came out of there wishing that I'd never bothered telling them that I'd had this massive check accidentally put into the bank account. You know. But I would have expected a thank you or 25 quid or a bunch of flowers or a bottle of champagne. Something. Very, very disappointing. Wendy said they wouldn't have been blaze about it if you had spent it. No, exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Very, very disappointing. Ask for compensation. Well, what's the point? You know, it's done that. What compensation? Why is there compensation? Only a mistake in it. You know, I'm not that bothered about it, really. But I would have thought something, you know. Oh, thank you ever so much, Mr. Reardon. For yeah, emotional trauma. That's it, emotional tra Oh, Mike says emotional trauma. I could get them done for that, could I? Yeah, you're one of those that looks to be offended, aren't you, Mike? I bet you are. You, you're one of those people that wants to sue people for everything, aren't you? That's why this country is in such a mess, because of people like you. Here we are, stress-related. Go away, go away. Stress-related. <laughs> right, I'm going now. Thank you very much. It's been a lovely Saturday morning with you all, boys and girls, OK? Uh, do, add, do get the Periscope thing, OK? I keep going on about this. Get the Periscope app. Because it's wonderful. You can do your own little shows and everything. Um, and uh, you can f you just get it on iPhone. Periscope app you want. Now, if you can't get Periscope, I often put in little links to my show. I can upload my Periscope shows to Facebook. So I do sometimes put them on there as well. Uh, the picture is unfortunately long ways on Periscope. But I believe 
in the next couple of updates they're going to do it landscape so the picture will be widescreen as I think it, it, it needs to be as well all right so Chris Reardon UK is my Periscope name, Chris Reardon UK. Finally, the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. It'd be lovely to hear from you boys and girls. Okay, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.